What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Simon Tech once again, and today we have a little bit of a talking head video. I posted that we are working on another big project in the community tab. You can follow me over there. Be sure to hit the notification bell if you want to keep up with all things cryptocurrency mining on my channel and definitely come check out the discord and check out the affiliate links down in the description to get not only some extra crypto for yourself but help me if you want to support the channel rob z asked in response do you have any opinions on these coins popping up everywhere for every dang thing is it mostly bs individuals trying to get money and like a scam this is a fantastic question and it really opens up an opportunity for us to discuss uh, a different question that's in relation to that, right? And that question is going to be, what is the difference between a coin and a token? So if you're around the crypto Twitter space or even on Facebook and Reddit and pretty much all across the internet right now, you'll start seeing a lot of cryptocurrency topics and cryptocurrency, different cryptocurrencies being advertised, right? And what their use case is and so on and so forth. Now, it is true that there are a lot of coins being created and that's gonna happen just like, you know, a lot of web pages were created when the internet first came out. Most of this has calmed down quite a bit since the whole ICO phase back in the first boom between 2016 and 2018 and most of them have shifted into basically more structured <laughs> options and the reason for that is going to be because well it is being regulated more heavily so a full blockchain to actually take off like a, a brand new coin to be able to take off is really going to have to get regulated by the US government if it wants to be successful. And so we are starting to not have as many ICO problems. This is also true on the token side because if we're talking about tokens, that's really what ramped up the ICOs and false securities and so on. And those were in a large part mostly scams and a big reason why the bubble popped back in the day. But this time is a little bit different and we will also talk about decentralized finance and all of that near the end of this video. To start it off though, let's talk about the difference between a coin and a token. So a cryptocurrency coin is going to be all its own blockchain, right? So essentially it will be built from the ground up with its own algorithm and with its own with its own proof of work or proof of stake scheme, right? You can get all this information usually from their website uh, via what's known as a white paper. If you're gonna be looking at investing in any coin, any cryptocurrency coin or token, make sure you go to their website, download their white paper and read it. We can also, if you're interested, talk about how to analyze white papers down in the comment section below to make sure that you aren't getting scammed. Let me know if you're interested in that in the comments but for today let's get back to a coin so examples of coins are going to be bitcoin and ethereum and so on now in some cases you can actually end up with two chains of a coin and when this happens and and a blockchain splits it is typically known as a fork. There are different types of forks, and if you would like us to talk about that in a different video, let me know in the description below. When a fork happens, essentially the blockchain will split and you will have two separate coins that are essentially built off of the same technology, but take different paths in the long term. An example of this is going to be Ethereum with Ethereum Classic, where it hard forked, and Ethereum is its own coin, not to be confused with the token, and then of course Ethereum is its own coin. So we've already gotten extra, extra confused, right? So let's wrap that back around. A coin is going to be its own chain. It's gonna be built from the ground up. But in some circumstances, a coin will have a fork, and in that case, two coins come out of one coin. This is one reason why there are more cryptocurrencies on the market now than there were earlier, right? Because this is something that can happen or potentially happen with every coin, meaning you could have Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and you can have Bitcoin and Bitcoin Trash, so on and so forth. Let's get to tokens. 
tokens are built on top of another blockchain. The most popular coin that enables this is going to be Ethereum. Now, when you create a token, it is basically creating a record on the ledger of the Ethereum blockchain to represent something else. Now, this something else could vary from products to services and so on and so forth. In the case of decentralized finance, most of the time it has to do with representing other cryptocurrencies on top of the Ethereum blockchain and being backed by coins. An example of this would be WBTC, which is, stands for WETH Bitcoin. And WETH Bitcoin is not actually a coin. All it is, is a representation of the value of Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. This makes things super, super confusing because now not only is there a Bitcoin, a Bitcoin cash, there is now also a W Bitcoin or a WETH Bitcoin and you can get confused really quick. So the differences would be, right, a split in the chain, for example, on Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash or Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, just as an example. Or it could just be a representation of a token that is representing a different coin on the Ethereum network. The reason why this is actually important and has been uh, uh, kind of pushing the cryptocurrency market forward right now is because it's removing trusts from basically swapping cryptocurrencies. See, in the early days of cryptocurrency, you had to have a third party exchange handle all of your transactions between coins. This presented a problem. One, it's against the principle of crypto. And two, you could never be sure which exchange was gonna be safe or not. Well, because it's against one of the pr principles of crypto. The principle of crypto being you remove trust, right? It's a trustless system. So really what Ethereum has enabled with the token system, decentralized finance as well, is the ability to trade uh, via a trustless system. And this is why it's starting to blow up, at least in my humble opinion, once again, after the whole crazy ICO phase. Now, hopefully this also explains to you why it appears there are so many new coins being created because it's not just new coins being created, right? There are new tokens being created for different purposes. There are splits in the chain of the coins, as well as there are representations of other coins as tokens. So hopefully that answers your question. Now, to get to the point of talking about being scammed, in a lot of cases, yes, if it's a brand new token, a brand new coin, there are always chances of being scammed. The biggest concern with new coins is going to be greater than the biggest concerns with new tokens. The reason for this being is on new coins, you still face the infamous 51% attack. A 51% attack is when somebody basically takes over 51% of the transactions or calculates 51% of the transactions. When a new coin is being released, this can happen very easily. And you wanna make sure essentially that a few things are not happening in, in the community of the new coin that you are researching. One of them being that you wouldn't want them to pre-mine it because if they are pre-mining it, then essentially they are gathering up a whole bunch of the currency for themselves before releasing it to the public. They could already, in theory, have prepared themselves to initiate a 51% attack on their own blockchain. And this way they could really screw investors over and split the chains lots of different ways to initiate tax on uh, attacks there. Another thing you wanna watch out for is airdrops. Now, while airdrops were technically a way to ease people into the coin by thwarting their concerns for a pre-mine, 
it can also be just essentially a sign that something is not right because now they are just trying to send out as much crypto as possible because they have too much sitting somewhere in maybe a single wallet or so on and so forth i am always a little cautious if i hear the words pre-mine or airdrop in any white paper and i'd advise you to be cautious when you hear those terms as well Moving on to tokens. Tokens have less of an issue with scams, but still can be scammed in just the same manner. So there are a lot of new tokens being created for decentralized finance. There are tokens also being created uh, for that are kind of advertising savings accounts and so on and so forth. So let's talk about a couple that have released recently. There are a couple that I'm actually invested in that I do like that are good, uh, that do the same thing as some of the other tokens, just not maliciously. So one of them is called Liquid. Now what Liquid does is it takes 5% of everything you swap from Ethereum to Liquid and it locks it away. And the reason it does this is that it drives up the demand, which drives up the price for everybody else that's invested in Liquid. It sounds good, right? Because now if you've added liquidity into liquid, which we can talk about in a different video if you want, but we also have a how to on how to add liquidity in Uniswap. But in the case that you did that, you can be fairly certain that anybody adding in will have to pay that 5% fee. Not only that, but when you pull back out, it will take another 5% fee and add that to permanent liquidity in basic terms right so essentially think of it like this think of it like a a trustless system for a savings account and the perks or the rewards for you adding into that is that you can be fairly certain that nobody is going to increase or decrease the price of that token by being a whale right so if somebody had a bunch of liquid right and they wanted to buy in and sell and buy in and sell just to manipulate the price it's a lot more difficult however if you see this and they are increasing the the amount of percentage of that token that gets added in and in the manner that they add it in you could see some warning signs there for a scam so for example there are a couple other ones that tried to do the same thing, but they did it by adding that liquidity into kind of their, basically kind of a master wallet, right, for the chain. And in that case, somebody actually had access to that 5% that was getting taken out, which mean, or put in when you would add into the li liquidity or whatever. And that would basically just allow them to tank the token by selling all of those fees off. So you can get scammed and there are a lot of them going around. You should be very careful with tokens. My suggestion with tokens is to check volume. Here is where you're gonna protect yourself in the kind of Uniswap field, right? And that's going to be by checking like Uniswap ROI and checking the total volume of the token and making sure it is pretty high. The reason for this is basically gonna be that your price manipulation worries are gonna be a lot lower. And so the higher the volume, the more stable the coin. However, the more stable the coin, the less, of course, possibility that you're gonna have increased gains. And I'm talking about those crazy 600 to 700% gains that a lot of people are trying to hunt down on Uniswap and of course other ones. Now, it gets even crazier because now we have more coins that are enabling more tokens. Polkadot, for example, is one of these coins that is enabling people to build tokens on top of the blockchain. So now, not only do you have coins and then you have tokens that are representing coins and you have coins that are splitting, but now you have multiple coins that are representing multiple coins as tokens. I'll let that sink in. So when you talk about <laughs> why are there so many cryptocurrencies being created, it's a, it gets a little convoluted. I hope the video cleared some of it up for you guys. 
and just always do your research, read the white papers, make sure that terms like pre-mine and airdrop is not something that is in their white paper and just stay safe. But I hope you have a better understanding of why it sounds like there are so many coins and so many tokens. Oh, and to note, right? So for example, if WBTC is the token representation of Bitcoin on Ethereum, then whatever the predecessor on Polkadot, like dot BTC or whatever, would be the representation of Bitcoin on that. Just make sure it's actually backed by that, right? So um, it facilitates you, it facilitates the ability for you to swap tokens in and out essentially for, for what is the worth of a coin. It's backed by, I think of like back in the day when, when the US dollar was backed by gold. Think of it like that, okay? Um, but just be careful. I hope this video is helpful. I'll see you next Tuesday.